Right. I think, ahead of the new season, I've got a team that can compete. I think. Hello everyone, Canberra Run here. Welcome back to FM24 with Ipswich Town. So, this is the preview ahead of the new season. This will be my third season with Ipswich. And we are heading into... Ooh, I want to say the fifth full season on the game. Roughly. Yeah, this is the fifth full season on the game. So, we I'm going to go straight into the transfers first. Because there's been a lot of big ins and outs. So, I'm going to go with the most important out. is that yeah, James McAtee, McAtee had his release clause paid by PSG. He basically came to me and said, I want to play alongside better players. I don't want to be here anymore. I said to him I wanted to strengthen the team. But he was like, no, for the good of my career, I want to leave to a massive club. So he's now at Paris Saint-Germain. They walked in, paid $33.5 million, gave us a ton of money. Others on the way out, George Hurst has gone to Osasuna. Adebayo has gone to Birmingham. Bubakar Torreira went off to Troyes. Obviously, Royce Norrington Davis has left to join RC Lens. And then the other one is that we have departed with Mason Holgate. He has gone to Wolves for $4 million. So we got some money in. On the expenditure out, um, we brought in... This is the first guy. Ilias Husni. He's three stars. He could still... There's a chance he could still improve. He's only 23. He's got fairly average stats, but I'm more looking for a striker that is going to be in competition with another young star. Because Yuan will be 29. He'll be kind of getting on a bit. He did have a really good first season, but I'm going to try and use him to like as a reserve striker. Play, got him from Cagliari. Paid about $5 million for him only, so he should be, you know... Fairly cheap option. Those he's got eight appearances, three assists. Wasn't really bad, bit of an average, but hopefully he'll be a pretty decent backup. Uh, my first one was to get that, that backup striker in. We then went for this guy, Travis Akoma. He is potentially, I mean, that's good acceleration, good jumping reach, good pace. Probably, I don't think he's got the, yeah, he's not got the best heading, but he's got good jumping reach. Decent pace, all right strength. But... He's going to be mostly pairing up with Jamide because they're both quite young. They're going to be the future. Signed for $15.5 million from Motherwell. He had a... Wasn't that great towards the end of the season, but he had a very, very good start to start the season. He's basically going to come in, play alongside Jamide, whilst I have a primary pair of backup... A uh, primary pair of defenders. Then we get into the real meat and bones. As you can see, we got $18.2 million over that year. And then $66 million in transfers out. So... This is where we've already spent quite a bit of money. First one, Jaden Philogene. He's the first of two players we brought in from Aston Villa. And I'm a little bit annoyed about that because it initially said he was a four-star potential. But we'll have to see how he develops. Play either wing, a bit like Mosquera, but probably slightly better than Mosquera. He's we paid about seven and a half million for him. He's basically because we've now got obviously Ben Arama, we've got David Horror Jr., who is not getting any bids for him. I can't find anything. Dobbin. But we got Philogene as well. It's the main problem that I do have with this squad going forward is that we are a little bit weaker on the wings with no McAtee and obviously Ben Arama's got older. But we've hopefully strengthened in other areas. So the second one and the one that I'm really excited about is Lewis Hudson. 20 years old, three and a half star potential already. He will learn to play as an advanced forward. I'm going to make sure he gets that because I'm not having a deep line forward. Um, so we're going to quickly change that. You're going to learn, boy. And then, I think probably if I do... Mm. No. No, he should be fine. Maybe do a little bit of focus on strength for the moment. Just because I want to be that little bit stronger. So, as you can see, he's... Oh, wait, shit. But he's already three and a half stars and pretty good. He already scored twice in one of our uh, preseason games within four minutes of each goal. So he's it's basically between Hudson and Husni, who's going to be the lead striker this season. Who's, Hudson is younger and probably got a higher ceiling, but Husni is somewhat already established. I mean, he's got great aggression, anticipation, balance. Probably could do better with finishing, but that'll come in time, I think. It's still pretty good to have 15 finishing. We're probably going to try and work on the strength, work on the natural fitness. Try and get him maybe to slay me. Well, definitely be better on penalty taking. That's what one. Probably see if we can work a little bit on positioning as well. 
So we can turn him into like a more complete four because that's that is five star. Five definitely four star, potentially even five star. He's only 20. We only pay seven and a half million and he's already worth 31 to 44 million. That says a lot about how good he potentially is going to be. And I'm very, very excited. We also brought in um, Aaron El, El Mali. I think that's how you pronounced it. Yeah, Aaron El Mali. He's basically going to be the guy who's going to come in and slowly phase out Leaf Davis, who basically doesn't want to be here. Paid about 11 million from Traps and Spore. He's been pretty good for Traps and Spore while he's been there, pretty much spent nearly his whole career there. Um, only about, how old was he? He's 28, but he's pretty, pretty made up. We probably are going to go back to doing wing back on defense, although he can play complete wing back. Decent natural fitness and decent pace should actually see him quite well, because it at least means he can keep up with the game a lot. Leaf Davis used to get quite tired by the end of them. This is another guy I'm quite excited for. Um, Rodrigo Zalazar signed on a free, spent most of his career at Braga before being let go. Obviously played with Schalke. Oh, wow. So yeah, quite a lot of, played a long and storied career. 28, but obviously see three and a half star, a good aggression, determination, flair, good agility as well. Probably, I mean, not the best finishing, but that's not really what I use him for. He's going to be more getting the assists rather than scoring the goals. If I want the goals, I'll probably turn to flat guard still. Um, but he will hopefully be able to, you know, good work rate. The only thing about signing him is that I had to make him the, the vice captain. So I had to kind of change my captaincy around. The captain is now Aston Rannox. Uh, Twanzebi, I am literally battling to try and phase out of the club and hopefully sell off. But he is refusing to budge. Promise he's nearly 31 and he's declining rapidly. And I need to get him shifted off. If I can still sell him and try and get some money in a will. And then I've got Tutor. Signed to 10 million, potentially going up to 13. He is an ex Basically, I signed him to be a centre-back, but if he's going to be a better ball-winning midfielder, he can come in a deputy for Aston Rannox. Which will be very, very good, actually. But I will primarily be using him as a centre-back. I was going to shift Juan Xavi up to the midfield role, but I can change that around. So the way it's basically going to hopefully be is that my main centre-back pairing will be Tutor and Cresswell. And the backup will be Jamide and Akomia. Which probably, that will be, as the season drags on, that will end up becoming my main partnership. Because both Jamide and Akomia are quite young. I'm hopefully going to get to the point where I can get, say, another season in the Premier League, finish another solid mid-table, and then start to develop what I'm hoping will be a very young team, bring in more young players on the wings and the midfield, and then we'll be able to push on and really do something. So this season is basically going to be me getting another solid season of the Premier League under my belt, and then either moving on or I will probably try and build from there. It is possible I could spend the rest of this save at Ipswich and then try and win a trophy with them. So... I'm hoping for some big things. The competition tab, the season preview, I mean, we're still not rated very highly. We're finished to, predicted to finish 19th still. The wild one is that Crystal Palace have predicted to finish 7th and Tottenham predicted to finish 9th. So make of that what you will about the predictions. Most of the top 11 are all the same. Sandra Martinez, Marcus Rashford, Joao Rego, whoever the hell that is. Yes, you know, oh, wow. Yeah, we're starting to get some uh, new gens in here. And then you got a couple of others around here. We don't really have any players in here. Oh, no, we got one. We got Lewis Hudson. Of course we do. He's basically the, the big guy. We start off against Brighton. That will be the episode, the next episode. That's when you will, uh, I will go into that. So we got Brighton and then Burnley and then we got Liverpool, Fulham, Arsenal. We're not getting, well, that's a, you know, that's a, um, Carabao Cup second round. But Liverpool, we got things. We've got Liverpool and Arsenal together, and then we've got Chelsea and uh, Manchester City together. We've got, I mean, you've got Fulham, Chris, Man United, Chris Pachev. That's fine. We've got the two pro teams that Man United in between. It seems a lot fairer as we're not playing like the really top, top teams all off one after the other. But it still wants to end the season. We're still going to be ending the last two games of the season on Chelsea and Man City. Just really loves beating me up over that. You know, last two games of the season, screw you. So I basically have to try and survive, get guaranteed survival basically by the end of March, beginning of April. Otherwise, I'm probably going to find it quite difficult. Um, other competitions, rest of them would just be competitive. I'd like to at least reach the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, and same with the English FA Cup. I do want to try and put together a nice little cup run. The finances, because I ended up getting a little bit rinsed with Lewis Hudson's wage, where I think I took a certain clause, uh, certain clause off, and then 
it jumped to about 40 grand a week and I got a little bit of rent. Same with paying for Tuta. Tuta was about 75k a week. We are way over the wage budget. We're at least 50k over it. I'm going to try and... I'm going to try and see if I can sell off one more person. I've, I've already said I want to try and move on to Wanzebi. Here's, you know, the difference is, can I generate some interest? So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Asian market interest. 24, 27 million. Rail better than Celta Vigo. Twanzebi will consider, okay, good news. Let's invite some offers in then. So we get, if we sell off our actual Twanzebi, and then I can try and bring in the only thing, other error I need to try and improve is bringing in cover for Redondo. Otherwise, Redondo's going to have another nightmare of a season because he'll be playing nearly every single game. Because Twanzebi, I don't mind getting rid of because I've obviously got Tuta and um, Vranix who can play ball-winning midfielder, and it would probably allow me to move Tuta into the ball-winning midfielder role and then either use Jamide or Akoma, Akomia as a starting midfielder right off the bat. I'm just hoping I don't have a massive scene of injuries. We've already got one person out. Um, Leif Davis hurt himself in one of the pre-seasons. Um, Michael Murray, our high potential youngster, has also gone off on loan to Peterborough. I'm hoping that he'll come back and still retain that three and a half stars. Potentially go up. He's got a lot of decent good stats. We'll see how he does in League One. Probably tried to blood him a little bit too early, but we'll work on that. Um, other than that, it's as you were. I sold off Finn back to, uh, the, the other thing I sold Finn back to Watford. So we're going to try and get um, Twanzebi sold off. Are we really playing on the Sunday for a first game? And then I will probably try and bring in one more player, which you will see by hopefully by the time I uh, get the um, get the season kicked off. But the season will kick off on the Monday. That's the first time you see that episode. Because so I am working the rest of the week. I'm obviously going to take three days to do the one-season wonder, which will take place in Spain. I'm not going to tell you the team. So... You will join me for the first game against Brighton and the other the game against Burnley. Uh, just quickly show you the preseason, by the way. Um, scroll all the way back up. It went very well. We went to Germany, beat Energy Cop, burst beats whoever the hell these. Uta. Yeah, yeah, like a fourth division team. K K <laughs> KFC. KFC Werdingen. That's that's how I'm pronouncing that. Beat Twent at Portman Road and then beat um, FC Sochal. So, it's all gone very, very well. So, you will see me for Brian and Burnley. I am expecting big things for this uh, season. I'm kind of aiming for another mid-table finish. Might try and sneak into the top 10 and go on a really deep uh, cup run. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more, you can always subscribe. I've been Canberra Run, and thank you for watching.